1.08 p.m. Eastern time on Long Island. It's been three weeks since the Sharks have collected three points in the standings. Yeah, I'm excited to see both offenses um, figure out solutions, how to break down these two phenomenal defenses. That last victory for LIU came at Stonehill on October 2nd. 4-0 victory. That was their eighth straight match with an unbeaten streak. And then tying at Howard in our nation's capital on October 9th before falling to Merrimack and FDU in that order, 1-0 each result. Yeah, I'm looking forward to see Alan Martinez playing inside the midfield today. Uh, again, um, with the changes and him coming out, not playing fullback, um, interested to see how he can uh, add to the attack and also support the defense. So first time myself seeing him play in the midfield. Matthew Salinas earned the start this afternoon, his first of his career, as you see Yaskalainen pedaling down the far side. Yes, yeah, Salinas is a very, very calm technical player. We should be able to keep the momentum and uh, keep the rhythm for the LIU Sharks today. Ball flying through the midfield as we speak as Puente clears it away. Yaskalainen with the sleeves and the gloves this afternoon. Nice style play. Yeah, you know, <laughs> I, I think I think he's definitely um, trying to trying to set a tone, and uh, he's gonna get his hands dirty, so he might as well bring some <laughs> gloves today. You know, there's Robert Winkler, one of the four team captains. Trying to play step for step with Nico Stoddart there. Yeah, it's going to be a, a really good matchup. Uh, Nico is a very good player, uh, a lot of speed, tends to creep up uh, on the weak side a lot, far post. So uh, we have to really be be aware of him. Three goals tied in first is Stoddart for the Red Flash, the junior from Brampton, Canada. With one assist as well and playing in all 12 matches. 5-5-2 five, five and two is St. Francis, 2-2-1 two, two and one in conference play. Winners of the last two against CCSU and St. Francis, Brooklyn. The Terriers, that's the last regular season match the Sharks will have coming on Thursday. I think Joe Serrato is going to step up this game as well, um, playing left uh, back. Um, he tends to usually play inside the middle, but I think he's going to have a vision on the game. Well, good run. Talking about vision, good run by Adam Martinez. Cut off there. It was Tom Skelback, sophomore, 6'5 back back there, anchoring the defense for Frank Olchevsky in his fourth season. Yeah, I thought Papa So was outstanding last game. Um, a lot of energy. I see he's very vocal today. So uh, it's going to take huge for him to make sure that he dominates the midfield, sets the tone, and keeps feeding the forwards. So we touched on it briefly at, at the top of the broadcast. It's 59, it's cloudy, it's rainy, but you said this is prime soccer weather. Oh, beautiful soccer weather. Prime positioning for Martinez, first shot saved by Jaeger. Martinez was offended last game when I, I said his shot, <laughs> he didn't intend to score. So he comes out the gates, testing the goalkeeper. Great strike, great follow through, I love it. Jordan Jaeger, the freshman from Munich. 58 saves on the season, 773 save percentage to go along with three clean sheets. It's one of the seniors that was honored this afternoon, Henry Haferkorn. Brick wall on the defense for Mike Mordoko in his sixth season. Clear leader of the team. There's Gordano possessing back to Yaskalainen, who has it play off his left foot. Heard Luca Campos, the associate head coach, Pre-match telling Jeremy Guardado, speak, speak up, be vocal. Nice yeah. touch there from Martinez. Yaskalainen plays back out wide. Oh, nice cross, almost there, looking for Guardado, and Malika was there far side as well. It's LIU knocking on the doorstep here early in the first five minutes, a couple of chances. Yeah, you spoke about it uh, originally, right, that have to find Emil's feet and work off of him, and he, he's the attack. And uh, as you can see here, great combination play. Um... And a dangerous ball put in by Martinez. Shower is still coming down here on a Sunday afternoon in Brookville with Mookie Wilson, my producer Nick Costi, Donnie Sherell here on hand as Jeremy Gordado is flagged for offside. What I'm like I'm seeing is that Adam Martinez, Gordado, uh, Malika, they're all trying to get behind 
and made it to work off of him. Third man running off, so that's definitely going to be danger and give him opportunities to score on goal. Here comes Martinez. That ball is skipping along the pitch. Like you mentioned, Mookie, you're a local meteorologist today, but you've got experience playing on these conditions, so you know what you're talking about over anybody, right? Definitely, especially with, <laughs> especially with grass, though, right? You need a right. little... You need a little Wetness on the, on the turf to make the ball move. Especially. A little bit of a skip there. A bit of a skip. Right? Yeah, Keep why not? Moving. But Adam Martinez, you could tell, he's so excited to be playing inside the midfield. He's hungry. <laughs> he's all over the place. Um, he knows there's a chance that he can uh, have opportunity to maybe solidify himself inside the midfield, which is a role that he originally came into LIU as a midfielder. And he was turned into a fullback. So this is his game to really change the coach's mind. Yeah, Kobik. Plays it to Stoddart, crosses it over, sails towards the right corner of the post before rolling out of play. First chance really there for St. Francis this afternoon, the first six minutes. Yeah, we want to deny the crosses. That's going to be huge. That's, that's where they're going to focus their attack. We have to make sure that we keep the pressure off the two center backs. Here's a look at John Lucas or Sosimo, the transfer from Georgian Court nearby New Jersey. Who's been fantastic in goal this season for LIU. Nine saves in his debut against Dartmouth back in September. Well done, Mavalika. There's Yasko Linen playing a little bit further out, and he had a touch. A little bit too strong there. What'd you see? I, mean, I saw an incredible switch uh, to the feet of Emil. He tries to one-touch it with his weaker foot. Unfortunately, he got it wrong and went right to the goalkeeper. But um, I love the confidence. Um, again, a great delivery. But uh, we need to execute early, get on the scoreboard, make this game easy for ourselves. St. Francis, Francis is going to press full field. They're going to put pressure on the goalkeeper, put pressure on the center backs, put pressure on the full backs. It's important that not only the forward shows, but the midfield is constantly showing and creating space. Joel Aschenbroek with the throw in there. Going long for Yaska Linen. Has the speed to get out in front. Tough position deep in the corner here. Oh, yeah, just touched off on Lucky. Nice defense shown by St. Francis. So same as St. Francis are going to uh, put high pressure on LIU. LIU used to keep them inside of their defensive third. Can't let them out. Salinas gets his right foot on that one as it bounces towards Malika. Now back up to Yaskalainen. Tried to get it past him, but Martinez is there. I'd like to see Martinez a little bit closer to him, anticipating that he was going to get that ball. He would have had an opportunity on goal. Pape So had it deflected. Now back out to Winkler. Good. It's important to get your rhythm. Spread him out. Oh. Back and forth, Winkler and Martinez. A little bit of miscommunication there. These guys are used to playing on the opposite side of the field from each other. So yeah, it might a little take, bit of an adjustment. It might take them a couple of minutes to get used to <laughs> combining with each other, but it definitely could be a deadly combination and a deadly duel. Tactically, how tough is it, though, to, to switch positioning in the field? And, you know, you think you play a ball off your left foot. Now you play it off your right foot. Take, take me through that. Yeah, I, I think the key here to start with is your mentality, right, and switching on what you have to do, what is your role at this position. But a person who's skilled as uh, Winkler, I'm not uh, as concerned as Adam Martinez, who usually playing a deeper role at fullback, now has to play off of the forward, inside the midfield, and tracking back, going forward and getting back inside the midfield. So when Winkler switching sides, he could do this all day. He could play the ball left or right. There's Martinez trying to keep it in play, and It'll be a throw in for the red flash in front of their own bench. So St. Francis initially has uh, fended off the LIU wave. Now we see can St. Francis get some rhythm finding their striker, this Serbian striker. 
and finding a way to open up and play wide. St. Francis unbeaten in its last three matches. We mentioned the two victories against CCSU and St. Francis Brooklyn. Had a draw, nil-nil, at FDU on October 6th. Last time these two teams squared off, you have to go back to October 24th of last year. Good ball, that's a goal. And Malika, far side, has it saved. You can tell he wanted that one back. Yeah, had a great conversation with Malik after the last game. He had some opportunities that he knew he should have uh, been able to tuck away. Um, that's just him getting used to playing high up the field and hitting confident. I did, I do like that hit, but uh, next time he needs to put that in the back of the net. And you can tell right now he's he's pissed off about that. Yeah, he wants that one back, as you can tell. But it's coming, and he's finding those opportunities. So that's the hardest part is being in the right place, right space, finding those opportunities now. He just has to have the confidence and the hunger to get it past the goalkeeper. Can Guardado find Yaskalina? Not that time. There's Stoddard again, the team's leader in goals. Yeah, great matchup. Unlucky. You can tell Mordoko just trying to get a lot out of Jeremy Guardado here in the midfield. Yeah, it's, it's, it's just the intensity he needs inside the midfield. to make sure not offensively or even defensively you're closing them down easily. You tell St. Francis they skip their midfield and they go long most of the time. It's pretty predictable. What do you see here formationally from St. Francis and how they're trying to penetrate this defense? Yeah, similar. They, they want to go through their, their striker. Um, play to his feet, open up wide and get a square in. But I think St. Francis, they want to attack mostly off of their uh, defensive pressure, right? They want to have uh, LIU make mistakes in the defensive third, win the ball, and then try to counterattack. See more Doko there on your screen, the head coach of LIU. Yeah, well, Doko definitely knows how important this win is today, especially at home. I asked him pre-match, how do you feel? He said, I don't know about the guys, but I feel great. Can't isn't be it? upset. Isn't it? If coach is <laughs> feeling good, and he'll, he'll express that energy all the way through. Hey, there you go. Looks there good there. <laughs> He's looking little, good. A little looking frustrated. Good. He's looking good. <laughs> you could tell him at halftime. Yeah, that was a, a silly giveaway by Papa So. He's a better player than that. Still nothing doing here. About 13 minutes into the first half. Nil-nil between the Red Flash and the Sharks. I'm a little intimidated by uh, Emil's uh, gloves. Really? Yeah. How so? Uh, as a defender, it's not that cold out here. <laughs> so I know that he's uh, he's 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 here for business and business only. Here's a look at the gloves. Number nine in white, Emil Yaskalainen, fantastic striker among the nation's leaders in goals. Well done. And Malika almost had it no man's land and almost had a chance to start a two-on-one for LIU. Nice ball to Guardado, gets it through far side in the corner, and he's double teamed. Good job, Avalika. Oh, and Guardado, good fight. That's the fight that Coach Badako is looking for. Wow. Referee, interesting call. That was close. Yeah, but <laughs> <laughs> he's looking over at us, and, and we're not the referees. You see another look here. Guardado got through. What do you think? Yeah, we're back a little bit too far, but yeah. Wins possession, gets tackled, clear. Clear clear corner for LIU. Now free kick for Salinas. If the referee makes one more bad call that way, we're going to give him some gloves. <laughs> <laughs> he, might, he might be a little nippy. It'd be like Michael Jackson with one glove if he was <laughs> trying. It. it was Serato, rather. They cut it away by Yaskalainen, and Guardano wanted to rip that one with his right foot. Cleared away by St. Francis. Red Flash making a push here in the top half of the NEC standings that we'll talk about as this match rolls on. Implications huge here for the postseason. LIU sitting in second, St. Francis fourth currently. Top six teams qualify for the Northeast Conference Tournament. The top two receiving buys, so chance for LIU to get their legs under them as an easy one there picked up by Sir Sosimo. Yeah, it's just way too much time. Uh, not only for Sosimo who received the ball, but also the fullback who played into his feet. Well, 
Well done by Alan Martinez. Good receive. Great look. Run a ball. Lost the bounce. Left foot strike. Yaskalainen. Saved by Jaeger. Sorry, I got excited. I was doing your job. <laughs> Sorry about that. Hey, you could do my job. It's okay. We're a team. Got, that was such a great ball by We're Alan Martinez. What a great vision. He knew you had space. Play that ball perfectly. Nothing the defender can do about that. Alan Martinez, you got me excited, son. Let's go. <laughs> you want to take your headset off and go coach? <laughs> Listen, that's the type of balls I want to see. I love that vision. And great ball by Alan. Unlucky. Good take. Nice look at the ball again. Good judgment of the bounce. Breed. Good strike. Nothing, nothing you can take from that. Well done. Joe Serrato's playing so well. Defensively holding the ball up well. He's able to find the forwards, able to find the midfield. I think that kid has a bright future here at LIU. Happy he's getting the start. And without Vigo Sveden having to switch up the midfield a bit, Serrano, of course, Salinas, Michael Malika getting another start, the Brooklyn native. Cleared away by Puente here. And if you are Yaskalainen, you know, teams know, of course, in the scouting report how tough it is to mark him one-on-one, -on -one, but having to play with two defenders virtually tied to your shirt. And he wins the ball almost every time. Right. Right? But that's where Cordado, that's where Malika have to make sure that they run off of him and be a lot closer to him when he receives that ball. They wait until they get it, then they're making the run. Right. They have to anticipate as the ball is coming into his feet that they're there. To, uh, for him to have an easy layoff. Got a look at Frank Olchevsky there on your screen a moment ago in his fourth season. Ranking 14th among D1 active coaches in number of wins. Previously coached at Towson and Davis and Elkins. Coach with a storied history as Winkler takes a free kick here. That's a great ball. Header, Yaskalainen high. Another guy who knows how to put crosses in at a perfect rate is Robert Winkler, as you see Yaskalainen here. Winkler, superb, superb, superb. Right foot, left foot, gives a great ball. But this is too easy. LIU has to have St. Francis play on their half most of this game. Keep them in their half, let them settle for counterattacks. Nice good take win. away there. Good win. Again, great ball. Good run off by Cordado. Cordado hounded by Shellbach. Good service. Martinez, another. Yaskalainen plays it off his chest there. And ripped hard by Salinas out of play. So what do you what do you take away from that from that chance right there? Again, the what I love right here is is the close down quickly on the striker. Fine forward's feet early, run off of him. That was well done at LIU. That, that's the remedy. Don't give this team any time. We lose the ball. We close him down immediately. Play forward. Martinez, again, terrific ball, square in the middle, one time. There's Stoddard. Trying to play it through. Excellent defender by Henry. It was Milan Dodgic, who also has three goals to his name. The freshman, the reigning NEC player and rookie of the week after a brace versus St. Francis Brooklyn. Yeah, Milan makes great runs. He's very dangerous um, inside the box. Uh, makes amazing runs, finds space. You just want him to play with his back to the goal. And it's very important for the midfield not to allow too much service to get towards him. Now Salinas here. Right past midfield in front of us on the sideline. Yeah, I love the patience. Mike Modaco screaming out patience. So so key. Let St. Francis chase, open him up, then you'll find the passing lanes. Well done by Guardado. Back to Yaskalainen. Trying to reset with Martinez here. Still loose. <coughs> and a handball. 
Dangerous position for a free kick here if you're LIU. I'm excited to see what Rink was going to come up with. Winkler and Yaska line and stand over it here. Who do you think is taking it? I would think it's probably going to be 14 and white. I think you never know. I think Emil's feels this is his territory. Really? It's 50-50 chance. Wet day. <laughs> Hard shot. Like a skin off the ground. Make it difficult for the keeper to bounce. Let's see if he pulls it off. We're going to take from our producer, Nick Costi, too. See what he thinks. Nick gave me a head nod. <laughs> He's agreeing with me. Here it is. Winkler. Oh, tried to play it on the ground. Iaskalainen. Nice setup there. Now comes St. Francis on the counter. But Pape so perfect positioning there to negate it. That's the hustle and the fight that Coach Madaco is looking for from Guardado. Such a talented player. Just want to see, see a little bit more from him, a little more responsibility, both offensively and, off, and defensively. Guardado, a native of local Amityville here on Long Island. Huge talent. A lot of talent coming out of Amityville. We shot big shouts to them. A lot of Long Island representatives on this squad, of course. Michael Andreo to Sami, Joe Serrato. A couple of Long Islanders. Yeah, Mike is soccer. Yeah, Mike was definitely tapped in. <laughs> so Long Island football scene. Um, one thing about LIU Sharks and the staff, uh, they've been very hands on throughout the community. And I think that's a that's going that's going to benefit not only the program, but the youth soccer around around Long Island. And a corner chance here for St. Francis, their first of the afternoon, seeing if they can engineer anything offensively here. Yeah, it's always dangerous. St. Francis with corners, good size, very aggressive in the air. This is what they work on half of the week, St. Francis. They set pieces. Absolutely. First one of the afternoon as you see the team setting up here. spoke about the field being money. The biggest person that affects is the goalkeeper, their area. Let's make sure he has good footed. Julian Jakobovic. Dangerous area. Well done by Malika. Now comes the speedy Malika. Switch the field. He listened to you. Askelainen gliding through the air. See, that's where somebody else has to make that run off of Askelainen. Right. But there's Serato. Good timing. Top of the 18. Gordado plays it high. But again, Goal kick for St. Francis. Every time the ball is played into a meal, if he doesn't get it, he's going to have a 50-50 chance of the ball bouncing loose and it's, a, it's an open play. So you have to make sure every time you play a ball into him that a third and a fourth person is running off of him. He's going to create chaos. We just need somebody to, just to clean it up. Well done, my papa's so good spray. This is where the patience comes in. If it's not on directly, just keep it, spread them out. Swing it through the back. Back to Henry Haferkorn here in the back level of defense for LIU. Well done. Here's Robert Winkler. A lot of green grass. As he motors ahead to Yaskalin and played it off his heel. If that one would have gotten through, he would have had a lot of daylight and a chance on goal that could have been costly. Again, the right idea. Unfortunate by Ascalani, but he has to make sure that, you know, inside the 18-yard box, you can't let those slip through. But again, I'm loving the midfield, the new, the new uh, starting 11, the energy, the creativity. Had a look on your screen there. Oh. Junior midfielder Papa So is a player's oh. down for LIU. It looks like it's Joe Serrato. Yeah. A collision. Tough look there for the freshman from Mineola. Two defenders colliding. He'll be fine. Could have been could have been a lot 
could have been ugly. Could have been really ugly. But uh, thank thankful. Let's go look at the collision here. Oof. That's tough to tough to take in there. Yeah, he should be a little winded, but he should be fine. He should be able to run this off. Yeah, wind knocked out of him. Just trying to easier said than done, huh? Yeah, me. <laughs> oh, he's all right. He'll be okay. Why don't you or I go out there and take a hit in the midfield, running opposite direction? Yeah, his uh, Puerta um, put a, a boot right in his chest. That is not fun. It seems that we have another man down as well. Gordado. Gordado's aching. This is not good. Yeah, a couple players ailing here for LIU. And Matias Hyland will look to be the first sub of the afternoon here. Could be an ankle, maybe a muscle. I'm walking off, confident. And there's Matthias Heiland, the sophomore from Thuringia, Germany. Scored the game winner in game one back on August 25th. If your memory serves you. That was a hot day. Remember that day? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, like years ago. But if you know Highland, you know he's upset that he didn't start. That he's coming on this field with something to prove. Uh, I, I'm excited to see him take on these defenders with a, a slippery day on this turf. He should definitely cause some trouble. Yeah, and you, you talk about the midfield and how it needs to be productive today without Vigo's Fedden, but having Highland come off the bench, a little bit of anger, or maybe just a little bit of buzz to his game, like you had mentioned, coming off and, and coming on here in the first half. Yeah, he, 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 you and I both know he's hungry for a goal, but also respect, right? He's a, a veteran, somebody who this team relies on, as you see now, him dribbling through. A little bit wide there for Yasko Linen from Martinez. Highland has a huge point to prove. Looking for the throw was Jakobovic. It's too easy to get out of there. The press has to be a little bit tighter. Anytime I see too much space inside the midfield, I worry. Maybe the defense is dropping too far back, but you give an opportunity and time to St. Francis. They will feed their, their striker, their leading goal scorer, stud out to give our defense some trouble. Far side, Stoddart tries to work past Martinez and Winkler. Not well, easy. Yeah, and that's what you want, deny the service. Heads up, great play by Winkler. Him and Martinez on the same side. Should definitely nullify any attack coming down this left side. Back the other way, coming LIU here. There goes the makeup call. Good job, ref. <laughs> John Lucas or Sosimo, the transfer from Buenos Aires, Argentina. So far, your impressions from both sides, Mookie? You know, I'm very positive and um, optimistic on the attack for LIU. Um, a lot of comp I love the combinations between Cordado. Malika and Emil. Um, now you add Highland to the to the pack, who who is a phenomenal dribbler, who will give another. Ooh, well done by Martinez. Sorry about that. <laughs> give another dynamic to the offense, right? Um, defensively, it's been pretty pretty easy for the center backs. Um, either the ball is coming over the top, and they haven't had too much work to do to, to be done. But I think Joe Serrato, who's a phenomenal defender. Just has to give us a little bit more going forward. 
Going to get another look here at the ankle-breaking move by Martinez. Mookie, break it down. Yeah, inside, out, wet grass. Here you go. <laughs> Watch out. Yeah, and unfortunately, his, uh, he didn't get a rise, a good enough rise on that service. Yeah. Um, I would like to see him continue to dribble there. Right? Yeah. After beating him. Keep going. Yeah, keep going. Get yourself inside the box. You get a better angle to, to get a better square. That's something that, you know, Highland wouldn't have hesitated to do. Yep, that's true. But that's also uh, Martinez, who's not used to playing inside the midfield this season. Um has to go to his confidence. So we've seen him giving good serves, good service from the wing. Now he has to give us another dynamic how he can uh, affect and go forward and get some shots on goal. Do you have any memories of getting your boots shifted a little bit up towards goal? I've never fell. I mean, somebody oh. went against me. Yeah, yeah. Me defending. And has anybody made you me. fall? Yes, but I won't admit it or okay. have it in my memory bank. <laughs> so you might have to. <laughs> it was short-term, <laughs> mem short -term exactly. memory. Short-term memory. Exactly. I'm sure you've got memory of making somebody else maybe hit the grass or oh, hit the turf. Man, right? I, I can write those stories out for you. <laughs> most memorable one. Give it to me. Oh, most memorable. I'm a very humble man. I'm joking. <laughs> I gave you a chance. Yeah, thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> so, so Simo gets his jersey a little bit more damp falling on the pitch there. Yeah, he hasn't had uh, too much to do besides uh, corner kicks. Um, it's good for him to stay impactful in the game, uh, play high off the line. Push up the defense a little bit more. I'd love to see, especially in the second half. Here comes Hafer Korn. Tries to play the through ball to Yaskalainen. That's why I want to see more playing through Salinas. Salinas inside the midfield. Highland would definitely prefer that ball to his feet rather than in the air. Emilio Askalainen, one goal shy of the NCAA leader, M.D. Myers of Rutgers, with 11 on the season. We're going to add to that total today. Here's a chance up near the box. Virtually triple teamed is Askalainen as Winkler plays one in. Header chance, Malika knocked away. Wow, what a chance for LIU. Looking for a handball there. They didn't get it. Who said Malika can't jump? <laughs> Highland still possessing for the Sharks here. Yeah, find Emil's feet early. Find his feet. Love the patience. Well done. Good decision by Papa So. Rebuild again. Patience, LIU. Salinas. <sighs> Give away. Miss touches there. Dangerous opportunity. There was the header from Malika. Yeah, good service. Uh, love Malika for, for getting in. To that header, you know, that's not his uh, strength. Emilio Oskalainen's got a storied history in his family's lineage. His father, Juicy, made 530 appearances with the Bolton Wanderers and then had a Premier League stop with West Ham. Definitely got National. down in London, but uh, you, yep. you can tell that he has football all through his blood. Uh, tactically, how he reads the game, he's oftentimes smarter than the defender who's defending him or the defenders, plural, who defended him. And that's why every time he finds the ball so many different ways, in the air here, flicks it off. Look at that. That's, th th that's world class. <laughs> I love to see LIU here is making sure they're keeping um, St. Francis in the corner. Trap them in. Keep them inside their half. As Papa So is instructed now. More on the advice from his father. Yaskalainen said that, you know, his dad played goalkeeper, so he knows what a striker should do to score after every game. He'd give his opinion. Sometimes I disagree, you know, father-son conversation Definitely. after a game. But having that mentality would be one thing if you had someone that was a mentor that played your position, but a position where you know what needs to happen for you to not succeed. That's definitely a big advice, especially coming from a Premier League goalkeeper. It's a cheat sheet. There you go. I like to call it. Right, right. In the, inside the house. Yeah, right. As so can play out wide here to Haferkorn, and he does. Martinez trying to switch the field again. Again, Martinez, don't be scared to take more than one touch. I'd like to see him sometimes be selfish. 
to get a turn and fired on top of the 18 yard box. Again, I just don't like how much time the defense has for St. Francis to play out the back. I think they will struggle for a little pressure, technically. Here's Martinez. Another cross. Oh, Follow-up behind Yaskaline in there. Well done by the goalkeeper playing off his line. Stay high. Out wide to Serrato there. Well done by Serrato keeping that ball in. Just has to clean up his forward passing. Now Malika plays it softly off his feet. Good turn by Highland. Great touch there as well, but played it out wide. Big implications here in the Northeast Conference standings like we've talked about this afternoon. This is no secret that LIU has struggled to find ways to score goals past couple of games. One through four, FDU, LIU, St. Francis, Brooklyn, and St. Francis. This is where the frustration starts to build for LIU. Not scoring a goal yet, having opportunities, not being a chance to finish, having most of the possession. Out wide to Serrato here for a throw in. Yeah, Joey, unlucky kid. There's a look at Mike Mordoko here. And a look at the NEC standings. FDU sitting in first place by LIU, St. Francis, Brooklyn. And the cutoff there at six. Howard can still make some noise and potentially mess around and win a few matches to get into that top six. They gave LIU some fits a few weeks ago in a 2-2 draw. LIU, uh, Howard's given a lot of teams some fits. Um, this part of the season, they're cooking. They're starting to get uh, healthy. And a lot stronger than how they started out the season. But uh, Toby Joseph has come on, and he's uh, another goal scorer. Andre Israel as well, the two subs for the Red Flash. Mm -hmm. Different type of uh, attacker. He's going to run in behind a little bit more. Take it's a place Highland. On Highland again. Well done. Now somebody just get in there. Get in there. Looking for it. Jaska Leinen was on the weak side. Couldn't get there. I'd like to see even Winkler on that back stick to give another option on the attack. Highland with a you know great, great dribble inside the box, but he didn't really have the options that he needed. He needed another LIU player there. Inside. Nine minutes to go here until halftime. Still nil-nil between LIU and St. Francis here on a Sunday afternoon. Senior day and showers is our forecast coming in. Still a little bit of light rain here, but nothing that's stopping play as the ball continues to skip forward on the pitch here. There's Joseph who had a chance to make a move as Highland plays a header towards Martinez. LIU yet to register a corner kick either in this afternoon's contest so far. That slide's got a little bit of extra yardage. <laughs> that, that, hey, slide tackling on a rainy day is nothing better than that. <laughs> Those white jerseys are really going to take a toll on the washing machine this afternoon. Good first touch. Up ahead, a shot and a save. What a poke out by Sir Sosimo. Warren's Ender ripped one with his right foot. Maybe throw a shout out to uh, equipment manager. Oh, Jake Ballou. There you go. Look at Nick coming on, firing out the shout outs. Yeah, that, that was an amazing um, touch and turn finish. Wow, good save by the goalkeeper.
So now a corner kick here for St. Francis near side. Here comes the corner, knocked away. Puente was there. Nice defense from the junior from Mexico. Yeah, Puente's been solid, obviously, defensively. i like them see to uh, give a little bit more on attack-wise. Right? Step inside the midfield, um, give another option. I'll see Winkler get a little bit higher up the field as well. I know he's got a chance to get into the box. And uh, when he has the ball, when he doesn't have the ball on the weak side, I want him to be a threat. Like right now, he should be further up the field. Creating that space for Henry. Hans Oftger also coming in, one of the seniors that was honored this afternoon, one of the four captains as well. <laughs> so standing right over Jakobic. You got to walk him back before it's a card. Well done, referee. Just give him a talking to. We have to walk him back before we give him a card. Conversation with So happening here in midfield. Yeah, I appreciate it. Appreciate that about the referee not being so car hungry. Walking and talking. <laughs> a long <laughs> walk and talk. Yeah, but nice hug from Pape. It looked like they don't have lunch after this game. <laughs> <laughs> Who's buying? <laughs> Depends who wins. <laughs> Getting LIU playing a low block. Now Maximus Rigby, the sophomore from York, England. And headed away by Puente again. Sir Sosimo came back towards the right center of the post. Another dangerous play. Cleared away by Hafercorn there. Dangerous area if you were St. Francis. Yeah, the coaching staff are holding their breath. They thought they had an opportunity there. There's Yaskalainen winning yet another ball, like you mentioned, as that one skips into the bleachers. Ofger to his German teammate, Highland. Again, I'd like to see Winkler higher up the pitch. Create that space higher up. It's about time you get the ball in a, a goal scoring. A goal creating opportunity. Back to Salinas. A little bit of a strong touch there as the red flash begin their counter. And Stoddart slips on the pitch. Yeah, Stoddart and Salinas might have to switch their uh, cleats come uh, halftime. Martinez. Shoot that, Allen. Tried to find Highland there as this one's cleared right past us. Mookie's got his hands on it. Oh, sick of daddy. <laughs> Almost kept the dribble alive. They trapped me in Winkler. I apologize. <laughs> I don't know if he heard you. So look at one of the captains, Robert Winkler, member of the NEC All Rookie Team last season. Yeah, I think it's going to be vital on the far end, on the weak side, that Winkler gets a little bit higher. Oof. Nice play from Salinas, trying to motor ahead. Poked it out strong. Nice play by Toby Joseph here right in front of us. Yeah, Toby can play. What do you like about his game? Uh, just explosive. Can get behind you, holds up the ball well. Left footed, finishes well. Surprised he didn't start. Uh, a Maryland product who's just uh, going to give a different dynamic going forward for St. Francis. Yeah, definitely. You see Mike Mordoko pacing the sidelines here. Very calm, but frustrated. Yeah, talk about that frustration. I mean, three straight matches after an eight-match eight, eight match unbeaten streak. And just what do you feel like has is, is gone the other way for LIU? Well, the problem is you know and you see your team is the better team. Mm -hmm. um, but just, again, just not getting the execution inside the final third. Defensively, um, as you know, LIU has always been sharp, consistent. Um, I can speak about every game. We just need other players, except for Emil, to step up and have some confidence in front of the goal and finish. The opportunities are there. Inside three minutes till halftime. The build-up play is, is, is right, and they're getting the opportunities. It's hard. Yes, you want to be patient, but 
Three games without a win. Patience run thin. Well done by Papa So. No call. Okay. Referee. Right <laughs> you guys going to go have lunch after? Have a conversation? <laughs> Myself and the ref? <laughs> Again, it depends who wins. <laughs> Inching closer towards halftime where we'll look at a nice feature put together on Julian Corisima by our own Jonathan Singh here at LIU and Beautiful. get a look at around the top plays in the NEC. A couple of stat reports all coming at you in just a few moments. Here on NEC front row, two minutes till halftime, nil-nil between LIU and St. Francis. <clears throat> in a match with big implications here on Sunday. I think St. Francis would be happy to come out of the half, 0-0. Zero, zero. Not too many top opportunities for them. Coming here and getting a point for them is vital, if not three. Only one shot on goal from Lauren Zender that was saved by Sir Sosimo. Five shots and three on goal for LIU. A lot of chances early. And that's that's the frustrating part. What do you tell your team at halftime? You got to tell them to stay patient, keep plugging away. You're doing the right things. Uh, for me, I like to see the defense play a little bit higher up just so you can uh, – Close down the space inside the midfield. Keep St. Francis inside their half. Better opportunity of you finding a goal. Are there any other adjustments you'd make offensively if you're either side? Well, one for LIU, I'd love to see Winkler further up the field, higher up the field. So when they switch that field, switch the ball, uh, he receiving it closer to the 18-yard box, closer to the danger zone. <clears throat> I would tell definitely Adam Martinez that you have space and uh, – Try to go yourself, not always serving the ball. I think for um, St. Francis, for them, uh, they're trying to go over the top, um, you know, counterattack. And for them, you know, they're not going to win inside the midfield today. Um, they just have to stay sturdy in the defense. And then when you have the opportunity, execute. It's going to be a tough day for them. Corner with about 15 seconds till halftime. I mean, knocked out of play, and that looks like it'll – be all she wrote for the first 45 minutes of regulation as the clock continues to tick down and hits all zeros across the way. It's also all zeros on the scoreboard. Nil-nil between St. Francis and LIU. Man, let's not make that a trending <laughs> hashtag, please. That's not going to be on Twitter. Don't oh, worry. Man. We'll keep it off. We'll keep it off. There's Pape So at midfield kicking off the second half here at the LIU Soccer Park on Senior Day. I think the oh. rain has gone away. That's always good. It's yeah. still cold, though. Yeah, but it's beautiful. Perfect for uh, soccer players and footballers who are running for the uh, next 45 minutes. You're not cold? Yes, because I'm sitting next to you. That's fair. But if I was chasing uh, one of these players, uh, I'd be perfect. There's Malika dispossessing St. Francis to begin here. Still nil-nil as the clock starts to roll now in this second half. LIU. So Serrata has to be confident going forward. Nice play on the ball. Nice touch from Joe Serrato. Well done by Salinas. Tripped up there. There, excuse me. Coaching staff of St. Francis not happy with the whistle there. Yeah, I think the referee uh, gave the yellow card for the studs up when he went into that tackle after having that poor first touch. I want a great job by Sinius by closing him down. Puente can definitely step step forward a little bit higher. There's Puente, deep cross there, trying to find Yaskalainen. Island keeps it up in the air. Now Malika services. Martinez and a scrum in the box. And reset there and back out to Hay for Corn. Mm, I'm lucky to pop a so. But I, I like the combination between Emil, Martinez, Highland, and Malika. They have to constantly, consistently run off each other, look for each other. Play two touch, one and two touch. 
just confuse by making your runs the defense of St. Francis. Make it difficult for them. They have the ability, they have the creative vision. Well done. You like the patient approach here to begin the second yeah, half? Yeah, let's open them up. Let's let them step up a little bit. High pressure gives them some opportunities for the striker to find some space. Good turn by Martinez. Great ball. Good timing to switch the field. I love that Joe's getting up the field high. Serrato, left foot across, sent away in an early corner, something LIU didn't have in the first half. Yeah, but Joe's going to realize as he gets older, he has to play that ball hard across the box with a little bit more pace. First corner of the afternoon for LIU. But that's where we want to have him. That's a great find by Martinez as well. Winkler plays it out weakly to Serrato. Again. Stoddart heads it away. Or Toby Joseph, rather. Starts the second half. Nice move by Highland there on the ball. Give it back to him. One up, one back. Give me Lawrence Elder has it knocked away by Serrato, who's played well here to start the second half. He's been everywhere. Everywhere. Again, um, last two attacks came from his side, and he's still able to track back and deny that cross. Matias Highland tried to play out wide to Malika. Nothing there, and picked up by Jordan, Jordan Yeager. The freshman goalie from Munich. Started all 12 games. So far for St. Francis. Sitting in fourth place in the NEC. Seven and eight, three and six last year. First time we've seen St. Francis attack the team, getting up the field. Nice one-two combination. Great tackle by Joe Serrato. There's Kenny Mesador, their far side, who is now down on the pitch. And Serrato down again as well. Tony's a lot of pain right here. Look like he's still suffering from that uh, the cleat he took in the first half. Yeah, had the wind knocked out of him. Coach, is that from the first half? And we'll take a quick break here as Joe Serrano is being tended to on NEC front row. The best time to be near a top health system is all the time. With over 300 locations from the city through Long Island, you can have confidence knowing you're always covered from head to toe and everything in between with the nation's number one ranked quality care. Dear college sports, there's light at the end of the tunnel. A return to normal and all we love about sports. You've instilled resilience, focus, and selflessness in us. We've put those lessons to work. We've found strength and unity in each other. You continue to take us places we never imagined. You bring out the best in us. So when we look forward, we see the light at the end of the tunnel. We see a better world for all of us. And, and for the college sports. sports. Back on NEC Front Row as you see Sadu Diallo check on for Joe Serrato, who was helped off by athletic trainer Matt Messick, having to deal with the injury back in the first half. Mookie, like you'd mentioned, that collision for Serrato. Yeah, he might have had a bruise to the chest. And uh, after making those two hard runs, he might have felt that pain creeping in. I'm sure he'll be fine, but he might need some time to sit down. Corner here for St. Francis. Dangerous area headed up in the air for a moment by Jalik. And now back to Sersosimo. Yeah, Diallo is going to have to adjust and get to the speed of play. Coming in cold off the bench. And his left side has been huge for this first half and an attack of LIU. Nice header there by Malika to get it down towards Highland. Almost got away. Yeah. 
It's going to be important for Puente to keep on talking to Diallo. Not a lot of experience playing at the left back, playing together with the, the back four. So it's important to coach him through so he gets comfortable. I like the pressure by Maliko. Well done. Sadu Diallo in the same town as Ben Asan Fall, the car Senegal. And Asan Fall had that heartbreaker season ending injury against Stony Brook in the uh, season opener. I, I tell people about that injury. 50 seconds left in the game. If that, right. Sacrifice for the team. Uh, got great position between him and the defender. The defender collapsed on him, messed up his knee. It's hard to imagine what this LIU attack would have looked like had it had a son fall throughout the entirety of the season. In one word, scary. Yeah, very. I remember when Mike talked to us before the season began and said that the trio of Yaskalainen, and Ben Asan fall and Michael Andre Odesami looked to be one of the more potent attacks in the NCAA and just hasn't turned out that way. But Yaskalainen still with 11 goals to his name this season. Odesami coming off the bench in critical moments as well. Maximus Rigby, the cross was cut off. Nice play on the ball there by Malika, who's been active all afternoon. Yeah, too easy there from, uh, from Diallo, allowing that man to get in between his legs. Here's Yaskalainen switching the field back out towards Robert Winkler. Oh, find a back stick. Now trying to find Yaskalainen, back corner of the post, put his head on it. Well defended. Well defended. Nice sequence there from LIU, the give and go from Yaskalainen and Winkler as you take another look. Yeah, again, well defended by the defender, getting in good position, making it tough for Askelainen. But again, I need somebody a little bit closer who's knowing that he's going to get his head to that. Because the problem playing with Emil, it looks like he'll never get to the ball, and he still gets there. He does. He so you does. have to always anticipate that he will get to the ball. And it's vital to make sure you run off of him. When I speak to you, I mean Malika, Highland, and Guardado when he's in the game. Highland turns and looks up ahead on the pitch. Going back to Matthew Salinas, who's played throughout the entirety of this match. Yet though Salinas has struggled a little bit. Um, a phenomenal player in the midfield, just needs to get his rhythm. It's hard just coming in not starting every game in the six and filling in, especially to a game with this high intensity and so much on the line. What else have you seen here in this second half, the way LIU is attacked and the way St. Francis has stepped up to the plate? Yeah, St. Francis has stepped up, but they haven't really um, given too much threat. And again, I spoke about it before. I love when uh, Fuente goes forward. And I think we should find some room for him inside the midfield. Maybe move up Papa So a little bit. So he'll be able to give another number in the attack. And I think that's just, that's just the key. When, when LIU is attacking, we need a little bit more numbers to make it a little more difficult for the defense. That's one thing we haven't seen. That's a, that's a good point. Uh, Puente sometimes playing up from that center back position. You think he adds a different dimension when he is there, though? Definitely. When he's able to drive inside the midfield, it, it pushes up another midfielder into the forward attack, which gives us more options. Highland tripped up hey, there. Listen, great fight for Highland. We don't see that a lot. Highland, I'm clapping my hands. Great fight. <laughs> that is well done. If you can add that to your game, sky's the limit. This could be a very dangerous free kick. Great position. Able to find the back stick. Keep it quite low. Drive it. Seen Winkler take similar free kicks, maybe from the opposite side of the field. That game winner at Columbia came probably from the same spot, but opposite side when Yaskalainen headed one in, back post. We'll see what happens here. Find Winkler. Him, find him his head. Crosses, looked oh. for Yaskalainen's head, and he almost had another goal. Could have been his 12th. Head and hands, wanted it back. Yeah, that's unlucky. That's great stuff. It's a 
Great ball from Winkler. Does that give you a little bit more buzz, some more juice? Definitely. But, and that's how the game is so uh, it's so mean, uh, a half an inch. <laughs> right? The ball would have hit. The game is mean. Better. Yeah, game is mean. Very mean. <laughs> Diallo right. collides there. We've not seen anything really from St. Francis in terms of going forward. And, I, and again, I think St. Francis would be happy to even come out of here with a, with a point on the road. So it's going to be key for LIU to find ways to open them up, being patient, playing through the wings, switching the field, finding the far side. Diallo looks a little rattled. That's two poor clearances that... Uh, Coach Madako would need better from him. It's a nice header away from Diallo that time, right on cue. Definitely. It's just, again, just coming cold, fresh, replacing somebody who's injured, and coming inside of defense is not easy. Good combination again. Look at Martinez with the run. Taking the play away. Good ball, good switch. Winkler, far side, crosses in, has it headed away. This way Diallo has to make the tackle here. Lauren Zender, back and forth, tries oh. to get past Diallo and a whistle. Oh, that's a yellow card, ref. We like to call that defenders on skates. Wow. <laughs> Prime position there. Yeah, again, we're seeing Diallo struggling. And left back. I think Coach Madako might have to think about maybe bringing back Martinez into the fullback position. Any other changes you'd consider making if you're LIU here? I think it's important because LIU um, attacks with their fullbacks. So Diallo, again, uh, very raw coming off the bench, not having a lot of playing time in this position this season. Uh, you may want to shore that up. Because even going forward, you gotta, he, he, the left fullback feeds Emil. Nice header chance there from and Diallo hasn't Francis. shown that he uh, possesses that uh, composure and also that technique. And, and again, I would step up either Salinas or Papa So, higher up, push one of my center backs, and we do have the ball inside the midfield. You have to go for it. In the standings, I know uh, LIU is second. Who's third and what, how many points are they on? St. Francis currently sitting in fourth. St. Francis Brooklyn is in third. We're going to take a look in a moment here. Merrimack and Sacred Heart round out the standings. What's the points? FDU currently with 16, LIU at 10, St. Francis Brooklyn with 8, and St. Francis U, Merrimack, and Sacred Heart all with 7. It's very yeah, tight it's in very that middle. Very tight, so that's why the win here is so important at home. Nice defense there from Salinas and Sadu Diallo. Next game's against St. Francis Brooklyn. You want to make sure you have a little bit of space in terms of your points. Some room. Going away to play at Pier 5 is never easy. It's a gorgeous view, though. Gorgeous view. <laughs> <laughs> but not in, no, not in November. Oct in late October, is very cold. Here's Yaskalainen getting free here, motoring ahead towards the box. Yaskalainen lost it. Coach Modako instructing the team to play a little bit quicker. Yeah, so they're playing slow. Yeah, it's too, it's too obvious. The switch is too slow. It's giving St. Francis uh, so much time to adjust. Get a look at Mike Mordoko there on the sideline, roaming. He had 30 minutes to bring this one home. Nearing minute 60 in the second half. Here's Winkler to take the corner. And still in play here. Took a nice roll back to Salinas, who can reset. Up to Sersosimo, who's way off his line here. Nice ball from Sir Sosimo. Almost got through to Alan Martinez there. No foul. Forward. 
Wadoko instructing them to move forward. Sadu Diallo gets a little bit of a burst here. He just wants a little bit more urgency. A little more urgency, right? Um, it's too relaxed. Um, transition play, win the ball back. You have to go forward quickly. We spoke about that earlier. More center of the pitch here for Highland. Trying to loop it in towards Yaskalainen. And offense looks stale right now. Yeah, it's again, anticipation. Um, we don't need one player run off the ball. We need two or three. Hey for Korn, back out towards Winkler, who's tripped up and plays it back to his center back captain. Ball needs to switch a lot quicker. Diallo got a chance to open his legs up and get down the wing. Unfortunately, his cross was denied, but hopefully he'll build his confidence and free up himself, get warmed up, and be able to uh, add something to this game. Fuerte again. Not going inside the midfield, pushing himself up, that we usually see. Ah, oh, Diallo, you can't let that bounce. With a wet surface like that, once you let it bounce, anything could happen. Eight forty-five to go in regulation. Yeah, right now, Coach Madak. Quiet. Well, he's thinking about <clears throat> what changes he can make to make a difference in this game. Who he can bring on. Constantly looking at his bench, looking at the faces, seeing who's hungry. He usually does an outstanding job in his substitution. So I'm interested to see which route he'll go. Warren Zender almost got there. Sadu Diallo trying to clear and does. Yaskalainen just wanted to turn and make a run. You can tell he's very eager. Hasn't really gotten the positioning that he wants as a whistle here out past midfield. Yeah, Diallo showing <clears throat> that he might need some more, a little more time before being thrown out here. I think that Mike has to maybe think about going to three in the back, putting in another midfielder. Ender gets past Diallo there. Now across and a chance on goal. High there of Jalic. A dangerous position and helping up Haferkorn is Jalic there. And St. Francis trying to engineer some momentum of, their, of its own. Yeah. Again, every attack for St. Francis coming down the right side. <clears throat> With the substitution and uh, the injury of Joe Serrato, they realize that uh, they can take advantage of a new player. And luckily, that ball skied over, but that was dangerous. They win again. Here come LIU. <coughs> See, Winkler, I want you high up the field. Martinez, tough spot for a cross, and right towards Jordan Yeager. What needs to pick up for either side? I feel, I feel like we're playing at a graveyard right now. It seems pretty quiet. Yeah, I think both teams, um, you know, might be out of solution right now, right? They both try different things, uh, different techniques, and nothing has uh, resulted into a goal. But <coughs> still early. I think 26 minutes is a lot of time. And, uh, you know, it's just momentum right now. And both teams, neither team has momentum. I think we lost the midfield for LIU. I think they need to get back to midfield. Salinas needs to find the ball a little bit more. Combination passes with Emil, put the ball on the ground. And most importantly, what hurt LIU is the substitution of Kibo Saini of Joe Serrato. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's really hurt their uh, left-sided attack. Look at the offense of LIU. <laughs> scored in every match this year, and then after the 1-0 loss to Merrimack, then losing 1-0 to Fairleigh Dickinson, haven't scored since October 9th. Yeah, the belief you can see is uh, 
two weeks without a goal. That's got to do a number to you. Yeah. Especially after being so successful early on this season. And the great thing about scoring comes in so many different ways. And sometimes, um, you know, more than more than many, it, it comes uh, ugly, right? So right. sometimes it's about scrapping and just wanting the ball more than in your opposition and being hungry inside the 18-yard box. And the Lakers injury. clears it out. Yeah, an injury on the pitch right now. Looks like it's Haferkorn who was roughed up there. He got hit in the face. Well, Haferkorn is upset, so. <laughs> Definitely St. Francis' uh, striker is in trouble. He's not He's not a guy you want to get upset. You can see uh, good sportsmanship by St. Francis knocking the ball back to the keeper. 24 minutes remain in regulation. See if either team will walk out with a point to their name or if potentially three points are on the line here as you see Joe Serrano come back to check in. That could be key for LIU to kickstart some momentum here. Yeah, good to see Joe back on the field. He had a slight injury, a little bit of a scare. He's fr fresh legs, fresh ideas, him watching the game on the bench. Oh, good ball. There's Malika. Had it knocked back. Again, it's important for Serato to play closer to Emil to run off of him, clear up the mess that he... Or the Big group sub coming on for LIU. Serato along with Hans Ofker who played in the first half and <coughs> Ivan Hara as well make his first appearance of the afternoon. Yeah, I heard a lot of great things about Hara, so I'm excited to see what he adds to the game. <coughs> Let's get a look at some of those subs on your screen here. Three new players on for LIU. Coming off is Highland, Malika, and we'll see who the third is in just a moment. Nonetheless, fresh bodies in for LIU. That can Diallo came out. do a lot for you as Diallo is checked out, confirmed by our man Mookie Wilson. But again, we're seeing the uh, Madako orchestrating a change inside the midfield, change inside the attack. Joe Serrato is good to see him back on the field after that scare. Still nothing doing here on either offensive third. St. Francis had a nice header chance off that corner kick earlier down on this side but other than that it's been smooth sailing for both sides a little bit of rocky waters here as Martinez tries to get ahead and couldn't find Yaskalainen who looks frustrated it's body language speaking very loud right now great thing about Escalina is that he's frustrated but he's going to make that next run he's going to keep on fighting he understands his role in the team Salinas will pick up a foul here. And a yellow card has been issued to Matthew Salinas. And Mike Mordoko is not happy about it. Take another look here, Mookie. What do you think? Yeah, I think a little bit late. Uh, it's the hip afterwards is why he got the card. After right. He missed the ball. He swung around. So I think the referee is justified by getting the card there. Maximus Rigby, one goal and three assists to his name this season, will take the free kick after the booking was issued to Matthew Salinas. Looping in towards the box. Still loose. Ivan Hara tries to get under it. LIU, we've mentioned, will close out its season at St. Francis, Brooklyn on Thursday. St. Francis, a couple regular season matches left against Stonehill and Howard. 
for the NEC quarterfinals begin on November 6th, two weeks from today. Yeah, LIU looks a little rattled. So it was tough when you had three subs coming on the game, coming in the game. Um, it takes a lot of communication, a lot of leadership to make sure they stay on the same page with the new players. Focus and concentrate on these set pieces. Corner here for St. Francis. Coming in strong. Headed away. And a goal. And a goal for St. Francis. As they take a 1-0 lead. A dicey celebration as well. What a sequence there for St. Francis. Yeah, we spoke about the set pieces. That was going to be their key to getting the goal. And, and uh, again, substitution. Edgar coming on, allowing his man on the back stick to, to redirect that header. And it caused problems. Nothing the goalkeeper could do about that. So 1 0 St. Francis. Goal scored by Quinn, Quinn O'Hearn, the sophomore from Nantucket, Massachusetts. And that's a really tough blow if you're LIU. Yeah, this is what happens when you uh, don't put a team away, when you're having your chances, keep them in the game. And again, we spoke on uh, set pieces. This is the key for St. Francis on, on how they felt they were going to get a goal today. As they played a low block, worked on counterattacks. There up comes Joe Serrato here. LIU now trying to equalize. A lot of time left, 20 minutes. That's for tough for when you're down 1 0. Yeah, but for LIU, they, they, can, they know they're the better team. They just have to keep a cool head, pick up their intensity, be first to the ball. Keep believing in, in each other too. Play the ball, move off the fit, move off each other, find combinations, and then play a higher press. To me, the, the, the defense is dropping back way too deep. Alexios Rodriguez on for St. Francis, appearing in 11 games, starting four. He's got three assists to his name as well. The senior from Silver Spring, Maryland, coming on for Maximus Rigby. Yeah, a lot of talent from St. Francis from Maryland. A huge hub. It's a coach, I believe, used to coach at Loyola, so I'm sure he has a lot of connections in the Maryland area. There's a lot of great talent there. He was at Towson for 30-plus years. Oh, yep, yep. That makes sense. He's got pipelines there as LIU looks to try and equalize here. 72nd minute. Lawrence another, Ender. Another giveaway. That's what led to the first goal inside the midfield. And again, substitution inside the midfield. It's going to take them a couple minutes, but way too long to guys to, to get used to each other and start combining. So 1-0 St. Francis leading over LIU. A goal from Quinn O'Hearn. What are you seeing here? Um, what we're seeing is that they're playing too slow, right? It shouldn't have taken that long for this uh, this free kick to get st restarted. It's clock management, it's game management, all these builds, all these are signs of a, a true champion, and we're not seeing that today from LIU. Any specific? Uh, sequences you'd like to see or you would draw up if you were LIU to try and equalize here? Definitely. We have to get Wrinkle in the game a lot more. I would play him a lot higher. Um, keep Joe Serrato uh, more conservative and back with the center backs. And uh, on the right side, Wrinkle make him play almost as a winger. Ender coming in here. Ender's a good dribbler. 
Gave a lot of trouble first half. As you can see now, draws a, draws a corner. Another dangerous set piece for St. Francis. Yeah, so it's me important. Put Winkler inside the midfield. Flat back three. And now we'll um, push Highland up as another striker. Uh, keep him high. Have Emil um, fill in to try to play the ball to his feet. Another corner coming in. Uh, Big that's side. That's dangerous. Anytime you have a corner and the ball bounces inside of your six yard, your 12 yard box, uh, that's the opportunity to score. A goal kick here for John Lucas or Sosimo. Plays it softly to Andre Puente to start this attack for the Sharks here, who are winless in its last three. Again, this long ball is too is too tip is too uh, predictable. St. Francis coaches are off the bench, feeling it. The three points they earned here was huge. We'll see Michael Malika come back on here. Along with Matthias Highland and Cuman Shin, also known as. We used to call him Purple Rain, but it looks like it rained a lot on his head. I don't know what <laughs> color that is now. That's like an old couch. <laughs> you did not just say old couch. Well, I'm sure Highland and um, Maliko got a lot of instructions on what uh, Coach needs for him. We spoke about Highland coming on and pushing up a little bit higher. So you sure you're going to see a, a, a formation change? Don't try and escape the old couch comment so fast. Some ugly couches in college. Some, like worn leather. There's some ugly couches <laughs> in college. It just, it just it kind of brought me back. You know, if anybody can rock it, it's probably human shin. Listen, man, if he scores a goal in the next 15 minutes. You're going to go get, buy an old I'm, couch? I'm getting the same haircut. <laughs> I'm going to the paint store and asking for old couch, <laughs> couch color. Mookie Wilson, ladies and gentlemen. Old couch color. I wonder who's coming off. This will be interesting. Matthew Salinas, Ivan Hara coming off as well. So Malik is going to play a little bit deeper in the sixth, a, a position that he loves to play. It gives him more time on the ball, more space. Hans Ofger also coming off and some fresh bodies for LIU. Kuman Shin, his first time he's played this afternoon. Yeah, unfortunately for Hans, he comes in, had a tough time, and he was able to adapt and adjust. But on the corner kick, uh, he should have been a lot of tighter to the man who was able to redirect that, that ball back into the box. Out wide to Hafer Corn, under 15 minutes to go here. 1-0 St. Francis. Again, too many, too many touches. Papa Sol needs to step up here as well. Now it's Martinez across and right to the gloves of Jordan Yeager. Yeah, Jordan has been, uh, been very solid today. Um, didn't have to make any amazing saves, but he also didn't create any, uh, any opportunities for the Sharks. Shin. Tripped up for a moment, lost possession. Quinn O'Hearn was there, the goal scorer earlier for St. Francis that could prove to be the game winner. Yeah, Shin gives so much energy when he comes inside the field. Uh, at any position that he plays. So I'm sure Coach Madako is uh, anticipating for him to run off a mill, create a little, clean up uh, the second balls that come off of a meal. But I want to see him take some more opportunities on net. Get some shots off. Papa So still believing. Encouraging his players. Serrano tripped up there looking for Lauren Zender. LIU regains possession for a moment. Now Malika motoring ahead towards midfield, trying to find Cuman Shin playing up top here. You like that move? Um, I like the move, but I like the ball that Martinez just gave for a finish. Jaskalainen puts it high with his left foot. That may have been the best chance LIU has had all afternoon. 
Again, Martinez, man, gives a great ball in. Um, really tracked down that ball. And it's a, it's a tough finish for Emil, but, uh, you know, you got to keep that on net. I think he swung through it a little bit too hard. Kept it sailing. Let's take another look here. Danger ball. And he was right there at point blank range. And Kaiser, or rather, Jord Jordan Yeager probably thanking his lucky stars that that one was high. We also seen the difference when you have another striker up there, how it loosens up Emil for these opportunities. Right. right? By, by Shin running for the ball. That's um, why I'd asked if, if that could play off there. Yeah, exactly. We'll see Stoddart throw in. Or rather, Kenny Mesador. Again, get Winkler high up the field. And play a little bit quicker. Still too slow. Sosimo playing out wide here. Over to Haferkorn and LIU just trying to get another run here. It's a very successful one, rather, a few moments ago. Martinez finding Yaskalainen in the box. And a hard tackle there from Highland coming in late. Yeah, it's very dangerous. That's a yellow card indeed. We might see what the no yellow card card will entail is just a couple of words being given from one of our officials past midfield. Late tackle from Highland there. Oh, he just stopped the clock? And now the clock will stop as he gets up. Interesting. Just to make sure everything is all right. I thought he would stop the clock a little bit earlier. When the referee ran over to the player who was injured, I thought he would stop the clock then. But way too quiet here at LIU Soccer Park. That concerns me on the player side. It's too casual. Sir Sosimo over the head of Yaskalainen in there. Well done, my chin. <sighs> Lost it there, had it for a moment. Let's take a look at some of the cross country runners. As you see there on your screen of LIU here in attendance. Good turn by Malika, you have space and time now. Nice turn by Malika indeed oh, as he gets some space. Moving. Plays it out wide to Joe Serrato. And Yaskalainen was there. Goalie's down. Shin takes a rip and headed away. Fantastic defensive sequence from St. Francis to keep the 1-0 lead. Yeah, interesting no call by the referee, but that allowed an opportunity for Shin on goal. Let's take a look here. High service from Joe. Yeah, that's no foul. Good call by the ref. Ah, Shin. I think you had that one again. There's Winkler here with the corner, under 10 to go. Puente was up there, upstairs, had a chance. Now Highland plays it down and just trying to play it away on the red flash. And they do, back out to Serrato. Who right mistouches hitter. that one. And that came right past us and missed us in every way possible. Thank goodness our producer Nick Costi held his breath. But Nick, you can exhale, we're okay. You know, that was really close, Donnie. <laughs> Nick Costi, ladies and gentlemen, he's here. We don't need another broken computer this year. We did have one earlier on this season. Somehow, I think we've talked about it multiple times, but if it's the first time hearing this, uh, you're in for a, a story. Somehow there was a ball cleared away, and the back of the laptop is facing the pitch, mm -hmm. but somehow the ball came down and hit the front of the laptop. Maybe wow. just a curve. Wow. We can't make this up. Nick wow. can attest to it, right? Wow. I sure can. <laughs> that screen was... Uh, Shattered. Yeah, uh, it was it was pretty bad. So uh, luckily we we escaped that one. We have a tent covering us. We've got a cameraman in front of us here. So I think Apple did it on purpose. You think so? Yeah, Apple Apple did it on purpose. That's how they get you to buy a new <laughs> a new edition. I think that's fair. I, I, don't, <laughs> I mean, we definitely succumbed to it. So there is a new computer here at midfield. So Lawrence Ender tries to dribble around. Nifty there. And yeah, that was his clock management. Alexios Rodriguez had his cross denied. Malika spins and gets it out to Yaskalainen. 
who tries to switch the field. Back out to Winkler towards the far side corner. Needs help, needs help. He's one on one, gets it cleared away. Now a corner for LIU. Nice play there from Robert Winkler, veteran move. Another chance for the Sharks to line up in front of goal and try and equalize here. 7.13 to go in regulation. It's just interesting how the players are walking up to this corner kick and not running and have more urgency with only seven minutes remaining. I see the LIU doesn't believe or not concerned of getting these three points. St. Francis on the verge of getting the three points indeed. Still some other matches going on in the NEC this afternoon, but with this win, St. Francis would hop LIU and move to third in the NEC standings. St. Francis BK, correct? St. Francis U. Oh, okay. St. Francis U. But then of course taking on Brooklyn, St. Francis Brooklyn as well. So St. Francis Brooklyn and FDU actually, that result is final from New York. Who won? Nil, nil draw. So wow. FDU with a point and St. Francis Brooklyn with a point as well. That's why a point, three points earned here by LIU have been giving them give a little bit of hope. So now actually looking at the standings to accurately paint a picture. St. Francis control. Brooklyn now with nine points. And if St. Francis U wins this match, they'll then hop and move to third. Mm. Or rather tied for second, second. with LIU. Yeah. Math is hard. I heard you're better than bi biology <laughs> <laughs> algebra. That's what I heard. That's the story. Another last minute sub here for Mike Mordoko as Alan Martinez lost it in the attacking third. It'll be Sam Kogan, yeah, freshman defender. Yeah, interesting bringing on a defender when you need a goal. Bigger body there. Good turn. Yaskalainen, a chance, and wide left of goal. Another prime chance, and Yaskalainen sick to his stomach there. Oh, man, great work by Alan Martinez. Slips in, Yaskalainen. Um, I mean, inside the 18 yard box. Yeah, great, great turn, good slip. Fortunate for the deflection of the defender, and he just uh, overkicked it. Hogan on for Pape So. Five minutes to go, and a lot of chances here for LIU. Just can't convert. Yes, yeah, instead of placing it, it looks like uh, Emil went for the power, and it just sailed away from him. And St. Francis just falling on top of it there. And Martinez looking for the ball. That's called game management. You can be mad at him all you want. But his team is up 1-0. He's trying to waste time. He doesn't want to have a quick restart. Sometimes that's worth the yellow card. LIU will retain possession. Free kick will move up just a bit for Robert Winkler. Free kick is headed away by St. Francis here. Nice touch by Malika. The first touch by Joe Serrato. Serrato trying to switch the field there, finding Martinez in the flank, but now St. Francis with some open grass. This is dangerous area for LIU as they try and equalize here, but St. Francis has other ideas. Alexios Rodriguez. Martinez tripped up at midfield. Gascoline and loses it. Had it stripped away. And possession of the red flash.
What are you seeing here, Mookie? What, why, why does the ball stay on that side of the pitch? Yeah, it's just, again, playing the ball too slow. Uh, Mike has now instructed Sam, who just came on, to, uh, to, to play higher up the field. And now his is the dump game, right? Every, every ball you get, dump it in the box. Nice play from Serato. Here's Malika into the box. Human shin as it wrestled around and cleared out. Puente playing up like you had mentioned earlier. Yeah, it's a little bit too late, but never too late in football. Ball hanging in the air. 2.22 in regulation. A hard throw from Serrano trying to find Martinez. Obviously, St. Francis has their whole team inside the 18-yard box defending. Parking the bus. Into Kogan. Plays it up high. And Gaskalainen was back towards the far post. Those two chances have got to be fresh on his mind, Mookie. He was right there. And those are usual chances that he converts time and time again. Yeah, I think he's also frustrated on you know other people um, not having the opportunity to help him out a little bit more. You know, um, As you can see, I'm sure he would like to play with another striker a little bit more to give him more help up front. Finding Malika. He works so hard sometimes, but by the time he gets on, on the ball, he's fatigued. Martinez hounded and tripped up there. No whistle. Just trying to clear it away is St. Francis. But LIU, one last ditch effort here in this last minute. Anybody could do it is Martinez with the service. <clears throat> one minute remaining. That's a good ball. Martinez, Puente was there. Yaskalainen. That may have been the last chance for LIU there. Yeah, again, you can't believe it, can you? I can't believe it. Um, another opportunity for the cross. I see what he was trying to do. Unfortunately, again, the execution wasn't there. 25 seconds now. And headed back, and Sam Kogan has to try and locate it. Tripped up there. He did that on purpose. Yaskalainen. Just trying to do something there. Last ditch effort. Puente's there. Header chance. No. Bicycle kick. Goal. And another is saved. Jaeger on top of it. And St. Francis will walk out of Brookville with three points in the standings. What a result.